Hello everyone and welcome back to the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything Commander and everything Jank. I'm your host Jordan Or Prairies and today we got another list, another list, another list, another list. Today we are doing another top 10 list of 10 super slept on cards under $1. So grab your wallets, kick back, relax, and let's get started with this list, shall we? Our first card up today is Duelist's Heritage, two and a white enchantment from Jumpstart. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike until end of turn. This is one of my absolute favorite enchantments in white. Personally, I run it in my modal Shadrick Silver Quill deck in my group hug mode. This is such a sneaky little guy, man. Pretty much every time I play this card, I am sniping someone for a lot of damage out of nowhere. And that's almost exclusively without my own creatures being involved because Duelist Heritage says whenever one or more creatures attack, it doesn't specify any specific person so you can target your opponent's creatures. I think this is a fun tool in almost any deck that runs white. However, I think it really shines in group hug strategies. Listen, your opponents are going to be playing big chonky boys because of all the card draw and all the extra mana you're going to be giving them. You'll be pillow fording, so you'll be safe from those chonky boys, why not give them double strike when they're swinging at your opponents? And on top of that, this card flies under the radar most of the time in commander games because there's a lot of scary enchantments out there and players won't want to waste their removal on Duelist Heritage when there's a Ristic Study, Smothering Tithe, etc. on the field. This card is also great for giving your Voltron commander double strike. Speaking of striking, this next card is very striking. It's Bog Witch, two and a black creature human spell shaper from Mercadian Masks. It has pay a black and tap discard a card to add three black mana and it's a one one dude this is this is just dark ritual on a stick you can repeatedly pitch a card to add three black mana to your mana pool I, that's amazing ramp in black especially in mono black where we don't have the ramping resources we would in golgari for example and bonus synergy if your deck interacts with the graveyard a bunch because then all the cards that you pitch from bog witch into the graveyard are not wasted you can recur them and there's just lots of value here i i, I don't think i need to say anything else okay moving on to our next card which is Viashino Heretic. Two and a red summon Viashino from Urza's Legacy. You can pay one and a red to tap it and destroy target artifact. Viashino Heretic deals damage to that artifact's controller equal to that artifact's mana value. And it's a 1-3. Listen, man, now that the Brothers War is out, we have 10 million more Urza players than we already did, so we need some artifact removal. And this comes in the form of a cutie little Viashino who blows stuff up. This is fun. So not only does it synergize with tap-untap synergies, but when you tap it and destroy an artifact, it also deals damage to its controller. So if someone's got a big, like, Great Henge or something like that, you can snipe it with Viashino Heretic and they're going to lose a ton of life. And most, if not all, red decks will love dealing damage, so this fits right in. And hey, if you don't like Burn, you could always put this in a Viashino Tribal deck. The world's your oyster, baby. All right, everyone, our next card up is Blossoming Bog Beast. Four and a green creature beast from Commander 2021. Whenever Blossoming Bog Beast attacks, you gain two life. Then creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. And it's a 3-3. This might be one of the last videos where this card is being featured and it is under a dollar because I just think it's fantastic. This is a repeatable and if you're playing life gain scalable overrun effect. I think this should be in almost every token deck, especially ones that you're building on a budget. And then dude, if you can find a way to like cast congregate or something and give all your creatures like plus 20 plus 20 that's that's insane this is such a dope card and it's honestly reminding me now that I have to go and buy one. So if you'll excuse me I will be right back. Okay, now that that's over, let's move on to our next card. For our next card today, we got Industrial Advancement, three and a red enchantment from Streets of New Capenna Commander. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a creature. If you do, look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's mana value. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So this is kind of like a birthing pod effect in red. This could be really fun if you want to abuse like dying triggers and ETB triggers. So like if you have Warstorm Surge out on the field, you can fill your deck with a bunch of high cost dragons or if it's is it krakens and just be shelling out a bunch of damage or a commander that i really think would be interesting with this card is hoffrey ghost forge normally with a card like industrial advancement the downside is designed to be that we have to sacrifice the creature that we're transforming into our other bigger creature however with hoffrey out on the field we get to create a copy of that sacrifice creature so it's like it never 
even left. Pretty spicy, man. Anyways, speaking of spicy, this next guy is pretty spicy. It's Intrepid Hero, two and a white creature, human soldier from Corset 2013. You can tap him, destroy target creature with power four or greater, and he's a 1-1. This, my dear Jank Center family, is Chungus removal. Your opponent's got a Dragon Chungus? Destroy it. Your opponent's got a Kraken Chungus? Destroy it. It's literally that easy. All you gotta do is tap it. And pair this with some untapped synergies, and you got yourself a little removal engine, boys. And since this is a tap ability, and after it's not summoning, sick we can do this at instant speed we can hold this up as a threat to keep our opponents in check and i also just love this artwork by greg hildebrandt he, it made the thumbnail so you know i loved it anyways let's move on coming up next we got probably my favorite card on the list today cauldron haze one and white or black instant from eventide choose any number of target creatures each of those creatures gains persist until end of turn when it's put into a graveyard from play if it had no minus one minus one counters on it return it to play under its owner's control with a minus one minus one counter on it if you are playing black and white and you need board white protection and you're on a budget cauldron haze as your ladies your lady yeah your ladies your witches. For just two mana, we can protect our entire board from a board wipe. And if we have something that triggers on entering the battlefield or dying, we're gonna still be getting those triggers. I, I just think Cauldron Haze is fantastic. However, something important to note is that tokens will not work with Persist. As soon as the token hits the graveyard, it gets exiled, and so Cauldron Haze cannot bring it back with a minus one, minus one counter. Also, it wouldn't even be helpful because most tokens are one ones, and they would just die immediately from the minus one, minus one counters. All right, coming up next, folks, is Dulcet Sun. Sirens, two and a blue creature siren from Commander 2014. You can pay one blue and tap it. Target creature attacks target opponent this turn if able, and it has morph for one blue. You may cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for three mana. Turn it face up anytime for its morph cost, and it's a 1-3. Got a problem creature at the table and don't want it being pointed at you? Just hold up one blue mana and dulcet sirens, and you can just continually goad that creature and keep it away from you for the game. Also love the flavor of sirens taking over the creature's mind or desires and forcing them to attack attack other people. And huh, what's that? I hear the siren call of the next card in the distance. It's last ditch effort. One red mana instant from Urza's legacy. Sacrifice X creatures. Last ditch effort deals X damage to target creature or player. This is kind of a little mini goblin bombardment. So you're attacking with a bunch of your goblins. Let's say someone casts a fog to prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. You can cast last ditch effort in response. All you got to do is pay one red mana, sacrifice all your attacking creatures, and then pow, you're hitting them with a bunch of damage without having to deal combat damage but we can also use last ditch effort after combat let's say we've dealt a bunch of damage in our combat step but the problem opponent is still alive they're barely hanging on by a thread what we can do is pay one cast last ditch effort sacrifice all our creatures and shotgun them out of the game and then the shenanigans get really fun if you can start copying those spells with things like double vision and just like that guys we're at the last card of the day but before we get into it if you've been enjoying this content consider joining the patreon the link is in the description we got lots of cool benefits for patrons including access to the e EDH Jank Center Discord. We have a great community in there. We talk about cards, sets, spoilers, deck techs, all sorts of fun stuff. So make sure you check out that link in the description. All your help helps me make more videos like this for you guys. All right, let's move on to our last card of the day, which is Chained to the Rocks. One white mana enchantment aura from Theros. Enchant Mountain you control. When Chained to the Rocks enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Chained to the Rocks leaves the battlefield. I think this is a super fun effect if you're running Tiana Ships Caretaker or any Boros deck where you want Want a unique removal package but yeah guys if we exile someone's creature they're gonna want to get rid of this enchantment and that's why i think tiana ship's caretaker does a great job because when chain to the rocks does eventually get removed it'll go to the graveyard but tiana will bring it right back to us baby and there you have it folks we are at the end of yet another video if you enjoyed this content make sure you give it a like subscribe to the channel and drop down below in the comments what cards under a dollar you think i should put in a list next what was your favorite card from today's list I'm always down there in the comment section hanging out with you guys, so come on down and have a chat with me. All right, guys, that's it for me. I'll see you on the next video.